Well, I'd like to begin by thanking you for attending this event and also uh, thanking the Fair Tax Organization and the Union of Patriots for putting this event on and uh, for so many Kansans like yourself taking an interest in what we've got to do to uh, bring our state to the place it needs to be, to a state of economic health, to a situation where the rule of law prevails. And by, by being here, uh, you're showing that you care and that you're willing to take some steps to make that happen. I want to talk to you a little bit about illegal immigration and what states can be doing and what they should be doing. As many of you may know, on Monday of this week, the United States Supreme Court granted a writ of certiorari, which is fancy legal speak for saying they agreed to take the case of the Arizona SB 1070 law, uh, which I helped draft, uh, working with legislators in Arizona. That law, as you know, basically uh, uh, formalizes and makes uniform uh, cooperation between state and local law enforcement officers and the federal government. It requires that state and local law enforcement officers don't turn a blind eye when they come across illegal aliens in the course of their routine duties. It makes sure that there are no sanctuary cities in the state of Arizona. It reinforces federal law that says a person has to carry certain documents on him if he is an alien in the United States. It's been, that's been part of federal law for more than 50 years. And Arizona simply said, well, if you're breaking federal law, we'll make it a misdemeanor in Arizona too. Well, that case is now going to the United States Supreme Court after the Ninth Circuit ruled the wrong way, surprise, surprise, uh, by a two to one vote. The Supreme Court is now gonna take a look at it. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic that the Supreme Court will rule in Arizona's favor. But what does this signify? This is, Arizona is really the cut, merely the cutting edge of the wedge, if you will. They are the state that's jumped out uh, quickest to start doing what they can to stop illegal immigration within their jurisdiction. I've also assisted Alabama in drafting a, a law that is even stronger in some respects than Arizona's law. Uh, other states have followed as well. Georgia, Indiana, Utah, Missouri, Oklahoma. Uh, these are the states that are at the forefront. But where's Kansas? Nowhere with, to be seen from that group. While those states are moving forward to restore the rule of law, to stop illegal immigration within their jurisdiction, Kansas is closer to California in terms of the statutes on its books. Kansas has taken no steps in recent years to discourage illegal immigration. And indeed, in 2004, Kansas took steps to reward illegal immigration. I'm, I'm referring to legislative action. Now, there are some state executive officers who have tried to take some steps within their jurisdiction to try to uh, stem the tide. But the bottom line is Kansas is giving in-state tuition to illegal aliens, a huge incentive, a very powerful benefit to people who stay illegally in the state of Kansas. And we've got to change it. We've got to move Kansas in the direction of Arizona and Alabama and away from the direction of California, where we're now pointing in our statute books. So we are starting to, to correct the direction, to take the Kansas ship and put it on the right course and belatedly begin to follow Arizona and Alabama, I hope. But there's going to be a lot more that we need to do. First of all, we need to get that in-state tuition repeal through the Kansas Senate. And uh, we'll be trying to make that happen in the 2012 session. I'm not sure if it can be done or not, but I hope so. But there are a lot of other things we need to do. We need to be encouraging cooperation between Kansas law enforcement and the federal law enforcement officers like Arizona has. We need to be stopping providing public benefits to illegal aliens. So we've got to save this money. We've got to take these steps to stop having our taxpayer dollars go to people who are not supposed to be in the country in the first place. But the bottom line is we could be saving tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars of Kansas taxpayer money if we got our illegal immigration problem uh, under control. And I'm urging all of you to do everything you can to make that a reality so that that actually does happen. We'll be trying to move some bills to the Kansas legislature again this session. Uh, we'll be trying to get the Senate to vote on some of these bills so that voters know where their senators stand, where their representative stands on these issues. Let me tell you a little bit about what's happening in Alabama. And this is very recent news, and it really hasn't been covered that much in the major, major media outlets. Um, Alabama just got the employment numbers in in November from the employment uh, shift in the month of October. And Alabama found that the unemployment numbers from September to October statewide dropped one half of one percent, so 0.5 percent. That was the that was tied for the largest drop in unemployment of any state in America. And the people in Alabama, looking at these numbers, say it's because of their immigration law. Illegal aliens were self-deporting, 
jobs were opening up for U.S. citizens. You drill down and look even closer at Marshall County, Alabama. Marshall County has one of the highest concentrations of illegal aliens in the state of Alabama. There's, uh, I believe, nine poultry processing plants in that county alone. In Marshall County, over a four-month period, the unemployment rate dropped 1.9%. So about a 2% drop in unemployment in one county. What does that mean in terms of jobs? Almost 900 jobs were opened up to U.S. citizens and to aliens who are following the rules when illegal aliens self-deported. That's 900 families that now can put food on the table because they're earning the money to put that food on the table. Those are 900 families that are no longer taking unemployment benefits at taxpayer expense. It shrinks our welfare state, it puts Americans back to work, and has so many benefits if we can encourage illegal aliens to self-deport. That's what happened in Arizona, it's what's happening right now in Alabama, and that's what needs to happen in Kansas. We, do, we achieve two really significant economic things. We cut down the taxpayer expenditures and we give jobs to U.S. citizens. And there are tens of thousands of Kansans who need jobs right now. So the bottom line is, this is a win-win. It's got to be done for the people of Kansas. It's got to be done for the legislature looking at the budget and trying to find ways to spend less on behalf of Kansas taxpayers. And I am so encouraged that these two organizations have united uh, to push this cause, as well as these other causes in the state legislature. Um, we need to wake up the people of Kansas to these issues, and we need to wake up the people of Kansas to how their legislators are voting, too, because we're coming up to the 2012 elections, and uh, I'm really hoping that all of you will take a very active interest in those elections. Do whatever you can to make sure that legislators are elected, and senators in particular, are elected in the Kansas legislature, who are attuned to these questions and who will vote the right way. Uh, the, the time for bad votes has passed. The time for voter ignorance has passed. Of course, there's never been a time for bad votes, but you know what I mean. Uh, legislators have gotten away with too much in the past, disregarding the opinions of their constituents. Uh, now we need to educate people about the issues and educate people about how their senators and representatives are voting. And I'm just so glad that you've taken the time to be here at this meeting and get involved in the process. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'm Geezer. <laughs> and I am a co-founder of Union of Patriots, as I mentioned earlier. About a year ago, we decided that there were some things that needed to be done that would help to facilitate the election of principled conservatives who would stand in defense of, of issues which we support. For this year at Freedom's Big Three, Obamacare, uh, illegal immigration measures and tax reform. Those are the three things we think we can have some influence on in the course of the year. Hey. How about that? Sobra, you heard uh, Steve a few minutes ago talking about benefits going to illegals which are not even available to ordinary citizens. The Sobra program is a program in all states if an illegal alien from any country, doesn't matter where they're from, if they get here and it happens to be a female who is pregnant and she has a child, that will entitle her not only for the state to pay for the birth of that child, uh, the day of delivery, day after, and any emergency re uh, uh, requirements that occur during the delivery, no matter what her circumstance is, she is in that system for the balance of her life. If she has nine more children, the taxpayers of Kansas or whatever other state you're living in get to pay for it. Now, I'll tell you what, when I think about that, I imagine some young man out here in western Kansas or Johnson County trying to raise a family, his wife having a baby, him trying to figure out how to get the gravy on the biscuits, not asking anyone for anything, pay his money being taken from him, forcefully and given to people who do not have a legal right to be here is more than moderately annoying to me. I believe we need to put a stop to it. I know for sure that we can. There are measures which can be taken by the Kansas legislature, which we hope to help get passed this year. And if you guys will jump in with us and help us uh, twist the tails on some legislators, we'll get it done. Emergency health care for illegals, we have a SNAP program, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, 
which is uh, uh, readily available uh, food stamps is what that basically is. We have TANF, Temporary Assistant to Needy Families. That's 429 bucks a month. That doesn't seem like enough money for anybody to live. But in addition to that, they get rent assistance. They get child care. They get uh, uh, a number of other things. In uh, the child care costs us on an average for an illegal family, which has an average of four kids, it's $972 a month per recipient. That's a lot of money when you add them up into the thousands. Uh, the systematic, now you will hear of the SAVE program. You've heard of E-Verify. SAVE is a thing which uh, uh, caseworkers are supposed to verify social security numbers and the like. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter whether you, um, if you've tried to verify a social security number, if they have six of them, it's going to be real tough to find them duplicating. They are bright enough to use one at one county office and a different one at another county office. And all of this conversation about saving fraud without pictures and without on the boots on the ground inspectors who can go to addresses and look at people's faces and identify them, we're not going to stop the fraud uh, with this foolish uh, keys program. Protection under law. Now, it seems to me that property is one of the most significant things that ought to be protected by our laws and by our courts. When your property, your money, is taken from you forcefully, I mean, frankly, uh, uh, you could end up in a whole world of hurt if you uh, are unwilling to pay the bill that you're, you're, the taxpayer says you owe. That money being taken from you and given to people who are not even legally here. Are our legislators supposed to be protecting the interests of citizens, or, uh, or did we adopt the entirety of the world? People, we are not against immigration. We are against illegal immigration. I've spent a lot of time in Mexico, in little bitty old towns from the very northern border all the way down to the uh, northern border of Chiapas, and I was there during the time when they were having a revolution. It was an interesting and wonderful experience. I absolutely fell in love with the people of Mexico. But I, I tell you this much, they had no interest whatsoever in how I thought they ought to run their affairs, and they most assuredly were not willing to support me while I was there. <clears throat> we believe that the legislator's obligation is to the citizen and to the taxpayer. We believe that is their primary uh, responsibility. We have uh, several areas of responsibility. We have a governor who has a very specific set of prescribed responsibilities. We have elected office holders of various sorts. We have legislators who have responsibilities. Now, one of the things that uh, seems to me has been sort of forgotten or perhaps ignored, I'm not sure what the malady is, but I know this much, it's not working quite right. The I see the primary responsibility of any legislator being more than a little simple if they're a, a Kansas state legislator. Their first job is to see to it that we are not overtaxed by spending too much money by, uh, by, for whatever reason. That's their first responsibility. Their second responsibility is to see to it that any benefit that the government has go, is equally applied to all citizens, everyone who meets the qualification gets treated the same way under the law. And one of the responsibilities contained therein is to defend us from an ever increasing, ever in more intrusive federal government. They need to stand in defense of our sovereignty. They need to reject there is absolutely no possible reason that we need instructions on how to educate our children uh, from Washington, D.C. We are smart enough to teach our children what it is they need to know. Now, one of the things that crossed my mind not long ago, I had had a conversation with a number of different legislators from various places all over the state, down in Topeka. And I heard some comments that were rather disturbing to me. I would quote them to you if I could remember them accurately, but I think it would be unfair of me to try and quote it with, with a, a, not a totally accurate memory.
But what I walked away from this group of legislators thinking is, my goodness, has the oath of office become to these fellows a mere perfunctory gesture, which they, they go through, they perform in order to uh, facilitate occupying the seat and securing the power that they seem to believe that they uh, uh, have been elected to exercise? I'm not sure what the answer to that is, but I fear that there are a considerable number of them who view their oath of office to uphold the Constitution, both of the United States and of Kansas. If they believe that to be true and they take that oath seriously, their first obligation is to refuse to enforce or comply with any law that even resembles unconstitutional until it is absolutely established under our, our system that it is constitutional. That means the Keys program that we were just talking about absolutely has to be killed. It, every uh, legislator is clearly under obligation to resist the implementation of that law. There's simply no question about it because it is highly debatable and we as state policy declared that it is unconstitutional and unenforceable in Kansas. Here are some of the difficulties with illegal uh, uh, immigration. This SOBRA program, you got an illegal plus an illegal plus a hospital and poof, you got a live citizen. What? <laughs> How in the world does this happen? 100% free labor and delivery, taxpayers pay the day of, working citizens never are, have this available to them. Any legitimate citizen of the state of Kansas is never offered this. What it is my distinct hope that we can help to engender this evening. We believe that the average citizen in the state of Kansas, and actually I personally believe the citizens of the United States, when they are exposed to the truth, they recognize it. When given the opportunity, they act appropriately and they, will, they are altogether sufficient to handle their own affairs. I'd like to see a show of hands. How many people in this room ever cast a vote to send someone to Topeka or to Washington in order to ensure that you were properly supervised? <laughs> what? Gee, uh, let's pretend that we are adults and let's assert ourselves in the support of liberty and the interest of good government. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.